Good morning, everybody. Natalie coming to you live. Spirit and coffee. Got my coffee here. Mm, yum. So delicious. Okay. So what? <laughs> what a crazy morning. You know, I <laughs> I was I'm trying to get uh, people to come here live um, on the show to see if they would be interested. Um, please say good morning. Also on. Facebook, if you're here, sometimes I'm not seeing the messages. I don't know why. I'm not seeing who's on here. I don't know why. Um, but I'd love to say good morning. It's kind of frustrating that I can't do that. Um, anywho, this morning I was waking up and I felt like I feel good, right? I was like, I feel great. I mean, even though I haven't got my iron infusion, I'm, I'm full of life. I'm ready to go. And, you know, you know, you just sometimes, some days you just feel cute. Okay. And if you're a guy, maybe I don't think you feel cute <laughs> per se. You might feel really good about yourself that day, right? Or you're like, I'm, I'm looking good. I'm feeling strong. I'm like, yeah. And so today I'm like, I'm feeling really good. And so I had this outfit, this really cute shirt that said love. And I was excited to wear it for the first time. And I made my coffee and my coffee was tasting great. And then I went to get on Spirit and Coffee. And I don't know what happened. I don't really know what happened. I, I wish I could re rewind and see what happened the instant <laughs> that this big, huge event took place because it would have been on earlier. So I literally was walking and somehow the coffee slipped somehow. Good morning, you cool uh, Capricorn. Good morning, Yolanda. The coffee slipped out of my hand and boom, it shattered. It dropped all over me. I mean, it spilled all over me. It was hot and <laughs> it was burning. Oh my God. And I was like, what in the heck happened? I don't even know what happened. And my favorite mug that I drink out of and I've had for like two years shattered. And so typically in these situations, right, people, um, we're very attached to our stuff. That's, that's for sure. And that's something that um, I think that, you know, as in Buddhism, per, you know, in particular, they talk about so the suffering and suffering comes from attachment and being attached to something. And typically people in this situation will let something like that ruin their whole day. Well, I was kind of upset. <laughs> And really, I was hurt about the mug. I'm like, well, you've had a long journey, especially with Spirit and Coffee. You have made several, um, uh, what's it called, appearances on Spirit and Coffee. Uh, I guess your time is up, um, and I'm going to have to get a new mug, which is pretty sad. The coffee spilled all over me. I was burning. Uh, I had to change. I couldn't wear my new shirt now because it's all full of coffee. Um, my pants were saturated in coffee. Uh, there was coffee all over the floor and I had to clean it up. Right. And it was like a big mess and I'm like stressed out. So for those of you who don't know about iron agitation is like high on the list. When your iron starts to go low, one of the side effects is agitation, irritation. You get very like, Ugh. and so I'm like, Oh, trying to like breathe through it, not get so irritated just allow myself to go through the experience of it. Um, but I started to think, well, with spirit and coffee, like how does this relate, right? How does it relate to spiritual alchemy? How does it relate to uh, what we, what I talk about here at Spirit and Coffee? And it's that nothing is permanent. Nothing lasts forever. Um, now, in the sense of things last forever, in the sense of like the maybe nature itself will continue on or the story will continue on, but the way that it's shaped and the world is shaped is not going to last forever. And the same with this pandemic, right? Or what's going on in the United States, things are going to start to shift. Things are starting to change um, and they're not going to last like that forever. I think people are coming at their wits end of, of sort of what's happening or what they're seeing going on in the world in the us and there's they're on the precipice of a huge transformation shift and change and so the impermanence right is sometimes we have to look at that and say what does that mean for us what am i attached to what is it that i can't let go of 
what is it that I, you know, I just, I want it to be the same way all the time. And then when it changes, we're like, oh, it changed. Why? Um, and that's the reason why nothing is permanent. Nothing lasts forever. That mug I thought would last forever. The other day it was funny. I was like, wow, I'm going to have this when I'm an old lady and it's going to be, no, I mean, it shattered to the point where you, it was not mendable. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not going to have it forever. I guess it's an impermanent thing and that's okay. Now it's time to replace it with something new. I do have my Slytherin mug that my, my niece gave me. Salute to you guys. There you go. <laughs> I am in Slytherin house. Um, but um, the impermanence of life and really looking at that, like what do you need to let go of in your life for this particular year in order to make way for stuff that's new? A lot of things in my life are leaving. A lot of things are exiting. And it's really weird because before I would get so hurt and I, I believe it's because I get so attached to people um, and to, to the comforts of life and to the way, you know, we want life to be comfortable. And when it's comfortable, it's nice and everything seems to be flowing, but we know there's no growth. We know that we're just kind of doing this monotonous thing over and over again. Nothing's really changing. In order to change and transform, we have to allow the explosion or the break to happen, right? And that's what happened. My mug broke, it's impermanent, and now it's in the trash can. <laughs> um, but allowing ourselves to break and shatter into a billion pieces, why? So that we can allow new things to come in. So as we start to transition um, into this new paradigm, as we start to look at what's next for us, it's really asking yourself, are you holding on to the old? Are you trying to just keep and hang on to that old feeling, that old sensation, um, things that we've already known? Or are you saying, hey, it's time for me to let this go. And how am I letting it go? Am I allowing myself to go through the process, but not really fully trying to reattach myself to the same storyline? Am I letting it float down the river? and allowing it to exit my life so that something new can arise up in your space. So I get a new mug. That's what I'm gonna do. And today I will be with my mom. I think we might go to Santa Fe. If that's the case, I'm gonna look for a mug and I'm gonna replace the mug. And I want a mug similar. It's not gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be different. Um, it's gonna have a different energy, a different vibe, but it's calling in new energy. It's calling in new things. So be like that, right? Allow yourself to look at all your relationships, at the relationships that are exiting out of my life naturally because they're not meant to go on to the next journey that I'm going on. They have their journey they're going on. I have my journey I'm going on. And it's okay because sometimes if you look at even storylines of characters, right? The characters in a story. Good morning, Suzanne. The, the characters in stories, right? Um, if you look at a book, right, and the way the book is written, good morning, man, sorry, and the, the way that books are written, right, um, characters come in and out. Characters come in and out, and that's the same with our life, and it's the same with things. Things come in, things go out, right? That's part of life, part of natural law, right? It's the ebb and the flow. It's the giving and the receiving, and sometimes the things that we try to hold on to are not meant to be held on to. They're meant to just be let go of. <laughs> and if we don't, then it just shatters in front of us sometimes. So, you know, I think that that was a good lesson this morning. Like, what am I holding on to? And you can ask yourself the same question. What are you holding on to that isn't serving you, right, for this next phase of your life? Is that Michael? Good morning. <laughs> Say good morning if I don't see you, but I think that was Michael. I have to remember the little heads you guys have. <laughs> it is Michael. That's right. Woo, cheers, Michael. I remember you by your little emoji head. I don't know what they're called for Facebook. Your little profile circle. <laughs> your profile circle. So yeah, it was just, and it was sad, and it was crazy, and I was very hurt, but you know what? It's okay, and I will, you know, it gives me a reason to wash the floor because there was coffee everywhere. It just, like, exploded everywhere, and I'm like, 
Oh, I felt so cute today. I don't care. I'm still going to post on my personal page. I'm going to post the pictures of the outfit. At least I got a picture of it. <laughs> Take a picture. It lasts longer. Um, so again, the impermanence of life, right? That nothing is permanent. Um, I would say for you guys for this year, um, write, write it down on a piece of paper. Okay. So take a piece of paper, write down all your relationships, ask yourself, am I holding on to this energy, you know, and what is it really serving me to hold on? Or is this something that I need to let go? Not let go as, I mean, <laughs> some people wait. Okay. This is what pe some people will do, right? This is some people, not all people, but some, they, don't want to let the relationship go. They're afraid to let the relationship go. And so, you know, they wait until there's a big blowout and that gives them the opportunity, right. Um, to sort of have a back door. It's like, Oh, I'll wait until, uh, they do something that I don't like. That way I can make that the excuse for not, you know, talking instead of saying, Hey, this isn't working out not to be mean, but it's just not working out. Okay, cool. Good morning, Pato. Is that Pato? Is that how you say it? Good morning, KS Kier Kier. Kier Kiki Kiki KS Kieker. <laughs> I love trying to say these names on Podbean. It's so fun. <laughs> I just spent a whole day doing that. I was trying to have my friend Poetic call in um, and be part of the show, and I don't think she's going to make it. She's probably asleep. She's on Pacific time. It's still really early there. It's like 6.45 over there. She's probably like, girl, I'm going to sleep all day. It's okay. <laughs> um, I do this early in the morning. So oh, let's see what it meant. Sorry. Say. And I don't even know if I'm saying that right, so I apologize. Are you a psychologist, dear? Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, I call myself a philosopher, but yes, I mean, um, a psychologist, I do understand the human psyche. Um, I um, I'm currently on my way to transpersonal psychology to get my PhD. Not yet. I'm in my master's program, then working my way up to um, that. But I would say that I'm more a scholar of consciousness. Um, and I don't, you know, a scholar of consciousness probably is a better way to describe, good morning, Deanna, what I do. Um, psychologist is more mental. Um, you know, it, it looks at the mind and how we behave and behavior, behavior, behavior. Ooh, I can't talk. I can't spoke. <laughs> um, and behavior. Um, I would say that a scholar of consciousness sort of looks at worldviews as a whole and how people interact with it. And I guess that would be the best way to say it. Um, also, um, a scholar of consciousness looks at everything. It's so um, looking at the the mental, the physical, everything, um, worldviews, uh, nature itself, the function of different things and how they operate. So it, it looks at everything. And right now we know that the consciousness itself is, um, it, at least from a scientific perspective, is really seated in quantum physics at right now. People um, are really looking at that. And so we're going into something called integral um, worldview. It's an integral theory um, our world systems, living systems, um, there's a couple of paradigms that are, are starting to shift. So I do understand the psychology of individuals because I am a spiritual alchemist as well. And this platform itself was designed <laughs> to educate people on spiritual alchemy. Now, the topic of spiritual alchemy, which I've been thinking about, thank you, Mansour, for this question, because I've been thinking about spiritual alchemy and thinking, do people really understand what that means? And perhaps some of the language I use is jargon. And, and some people are like, what? <laughs> and then there's days that it's just like, oh, okay, I'm on, I get what she's saying. Um, and the jargon within the spiritual alchemy community, right? So understanding what a spiritual alchemist is, um, you know, I think it's something that's critical. I think it's something that can be taught here on Spirit and Coffee and something that should be taught so people understand sort of the mindset or the philosophy um, or the principles 
in which I'm speaking to. Um, I will say this, that spiritual alchemy is all inclusive of everything. <laughs> it doesn't deny anything, right? Um, it, it allows the process to actually unfold and unveil within the individual person. So I love spiritual alchemy because it, it doesn't uh, create a us versus them. It doesn't create a black and white. What it does is it allows us to experience the black and the white rather than put some kind of a label and judgment on it. Um, it's an inclusive, it's an everything. And so people's religious uh, beliefs, it doesn't say you're wrong for having your beliefs. I say God. I tell people on here, man, sorry that I use the word God because it's easy. That doesn't mean most people will tie the word God to Christianity or, you know, um, a certain religious. But that's not how I, I mean, I just use it because it's easy. Um, the reality is we, we are too feeble our, our minds are too, we're too tiny to really understand this concept of God. Um, and nobody has the answer of what God is. God just is. There's no way to answer that, right? Um, and so everybody has their unique experience of God. And that, right, itself lends to sort of psychology in some way. It lends to the way that we experience the world from a mental perspective, because our mind is analyzing the things that we're seeing or that are arising in our space. So as we see things, right, and we engage with them, we make up a story about it. We, we make up a story and it was kind of funny. I was having this conversation yesterday with a couple of individuals um, that I work with. So I work one day a week um, at a gym <laughs> and, um, I, I just do for the membership cause I love it. And Hey, why not? Uh, it's my social life and this young kid and there's hope for the future, by the way, I don't know how old you guys are on this pod. You guys can put your age here if you want to, or don't, it's fine. Um, but this, what this, I work with youth. I work with young kids cause you know, it's, it's a gym job. So you have a bunch of teenagers that are still in high school. Good morning, Ignacio. I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? I hope you're well. Um, and so there's these children, you know, that work there. And there's hope for our future, I'll just say that. Um, these kids are very intelligent, hardworking kids. Um, and, you know, they were talking about politics. Um, and they were talking about, you know, capitalism. And this kid said, well, I think Marxism is the best. And, you know, my thing was like, well, why? Well, <laughs> good morning, Sachin. Um, oh, you're trying to call in. I think I'm going to try to take callers eventually. <laughs> I keep saying that. Uh, I wanted to do a test with um, a whole, with a poetic, but she hasn't called in yet. And once I do that and I know it works, then I will allow people to call in because I want to make sure that the audio works for the people on Facebook as I do it live. But this kid was talking about Marx, Marxism and stuff. And for me, I don't get into politics and all that kind of stuff, right? My worldview is a little different. And so I said, well, why do you think that's the best? I said, people talk about, you know, political systems and and how it's no good. But what would you put, um, <laughs> what would you put in place of it? Like people want a different system, but they don't even know what they would put in place of it. Like if you're going to want a different system, then maybe you should have an idea of, well, what could it be that we put in place? And no one's going to agree. We're not all 100% going to agree to the same kind of economy. You know, everybody's not going to agree. I think people will agree that we all, oh, here we go. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Thanks for the explanation. Those were great. Good luck, dear. And Nice to meet you. You're so sweet. I feel that. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sorry. Um, I don't know if you're still on here. Good morning, PVG. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Sarah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be having people call in, but having these children, you know, or these kids talk about these political things, but then going into a deeper understanding and meaning of stuff. So I said, well, let's just look at this. You know, how out of touch we are with our own natural law and how we've come so far and so distant from nature itself and the very existence and how we live and 
the thing is, is that it's, it's, it's hard. And I'll tell you that it's not the most popular subject. People want some fantasy or some magical thing, but really the magic happens when you start living your life. When you start focusing on you and your dreams, when you start to ask yourself, how do I see the world? How do I engage in the world? What is that experience for me? Am I self-aware? And it's really hard because there's very few people that will spend their lifetime really on the journey. I think more and more people are awakening to be on the journey, but they get sidetracked and there's nothing wrong with it, right? We're all here for our own personal evolution and to come and have this spiritual awakening. Um, but it, it is, it's true. Very few people focus on themselves. They're constantly focusing on the external world. Um, they're focused on materialism. They're focused on, you know, the drama, you know, or they're focused on, you know, watching these drama series, TV shows and all this stuff. And to do the work takes a lot of alone time. It takes a lot of you being by yourself. And it takes speaking to an audience of two, sometimes an audience of one. Because true practitioners of the work, it takes a lot of effort. It's not easy to work on yourself completely every single day. There's so many distractions. There's so many other things calling our attention and that we focus on and we move towards. So, you know, I know that it's like <laughs> sometimes guys like you just go on a tangent and really know, but it's all interconnected. It's all interconnected. Thank you for sharing the show. So and how is it interconnected? Because I you can connect one from the other when you say, well, are you a psychologist? That kind of puts you in a box, right? Even saying that I'm a scholar of consciousness. It kind of puts you in a box in a way, because now you're playing with what material is available to you for that particular topic. But think about it, you guys. I want you to really think about it. Those of you on here, and I'm getting very serious with you, like literally think about it. Ask yourself, are you living your best life? Like truly living your best life? Like this is an authentic question. Not like, oh yeah, kind of. I mean, truly. Like, where you're excited, like all cylinders are firing all the time and you're just excited about life and you're like, yes, I freaking love my life. I mean, is it truly that for you? Or is it kind of like, oh, something feels like it's missing. Good morning, Ricky. Uh, hey, Tommy. I think I said good morning to you. Or does it feel like something's missing inside? Like, I'm not quite there. Here's the deal. <laughs> I don't know about, like people say we get reincarnated, all this stuff. I don't know if we remember, but right now, you have now, you have today, you have this moment. What is it inside of you that you want to experience? Life has so many fun, cool opportunities to experience. Like you have so much, there's so much, and we just miss out. We miss out. I don't know why. Why do we miss out? Why do you want to miss out? Yeah, I don't want to miss out. I want to have fun. I want to do, I want to live my best life. I want to go and if I want to travel and if I want to fly and if I want to do this, you know, and I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to be the go-getter of my life. Nobody's going to do it for you. I mean, unless you have a rich husband or a rich wife and they're like, hey, let me just pay for you to do all, you know, <laughs> there's always going to be, you got to give something right for that to happen. So it's still your ebb and flowing. It's like, why not focus on the things that you love? Why not? What are you waiting for? Well, I'll wait for the pandemic to be over. Well, then something else shows up. Well, then I'll wait for that. Well, then I'll wait. You, you don't have to wait. That's the point. You don't have to wait. Life is here for us to accept experience its fullness, its wholeness. And you have the opportunity to do that, to experience life to its full potential, your full potential, like that beautiful thing inside of you, right? You're just like this amazing ball of energy that's just waiting to be expressed to the world. But you can never really truly tap into that little spark. Why? 
because you're so distracted by everything else. You're allowing other things to take your focus away from that inner powerful light. If you focus on that inner powerful light, you will naturally attract the things in your life that are for you. Right? The power of manifestation. There's so many books on this stuff. There's so many people um, inserting, how do you do this? How do you manifest? The reality is focus on you. Just focus on you. Focus on your journey. So if we say psychologists, I know this is like a question. It's like, oh, wow, that's a big answer. I don't, you know, I was checked out 20 minutes ago. But here's the deal. Psychology talks about the mind and behavior and our mental state of being. So mentally, how are we going through things? But there's something else, right? What about the body? How's the body feel? How are the emotions? Right? How do I experience these things? How do I, what do, what do I feel? How are, what are my sensations telling me about this? What chemicals am I releasing? So there's more to the story, right? We have a vehicle, a vessel, and then a spirit. And that spirit or that soul is the, the wholeness within us. It's when we've come to this place of wholeness, completeness, right? Where we feel whole, perfect, and complete within our own self. And that's the state where we connect to the soul, which we would call the high priestess. And in that, we connect to our higher self. And I wouldn't even say higher self. I don't think that's the right word because I feel like higher self is still archetypal. But I would say that we connect to the essence of everything and nothing at the same time. The Akashic record, if you will. God, our oneness, our wholeness. And it's there for everybody. It's available for everybody. But it takes a practitioner of the work. And the practitioner of the work is someone who continues to do the work for themselves. Dear, I have to study now. Will you back tomorrow? Yes, I do this Monday through Friday. Um, tell me what you are studying real quick before you leave Mansori. And I only go on for about 30 minutes. I try not to do more than 30 minutes on these podcasts because it's pretty deep stuff. You know, if this was a party, I think we could party for hours. <laughs> Um, but it becomes very deep and it's, it's, it's a very deep, heavy conversation mostly. Um, but I would love to know what you're studying. If you want to share that. Um, and yes, again, I come on and I'm not like at the top of the hour. It's kind of seven 30, eight o'clock sometimes. What time can I join you live tomorrow? Uh, yeah, about seven 30. It'd be nice if I could just be like, you know, I would have been on at seven o'clock if I went to drop coffee all over me and spilled the coffee. I just broke a glass. It was crazy this morning. I had a chaotic, which helped me talk about the impermanence. And then you came in and asked a question about psychology. Um, but yes, whatever you would like to know about emotions or what, what about psychology you'd like to know. You'd also email me at spiritandbrew at gmail.com. Um, I tell people I give open invitations, but rarely do I get um, inquiries. And that's fine. There you go. It's very much so you can also email me. Um, but I, I would like to know what you're studying. That's awesome. And where are you, Mansori, as well? Um, so um, again, when we're thinking about the impermanence, um, we're thinking about um, not putting ourselves in a box. And this kind of went all over because I love to answer people's questions rather than just talk about what Natalie wants to talk about. <laughs> um, thinking about the impermanence. So if you guys will, for me, um, sort of your homework or a takeaway is to write down, write, write down. Thanks for sharing your email. You're welcome. Good morning, Hannah. Looking at... Um, Hannah 99, <laughs> looking at or get a piece of paper and write down all of the 
not just people, right? But the stuff in your life that you're attaching yourself to that you know has got to go. <laughs> and just allow yourself to ask, why am I hanging on to this? And is it too hard to hang on to? And how do I shift it or <laughs> cut it off, whatever it is, right? Allow myself to let it sail. You know, how do I do that? Or what is it going to take for me to do that? Um, and allow new energy to arise. So for me, it was my coffee mug. I know that sounds crazy. That is a material thing. But I just loved it and it broke. And it's okay. It's in the trash. <laughs> so now I get to get a new one. <laughs> and that's really how it goes. Um, there are people exiting my life, like I said. And different, uh, so I used to have a, a, a trainer and no longer have a trainer, but guess what? Now I'm in Kung Fu. So that's exciting. So I get to have my Kung Fu um, take the place of what was there before. And I wanted to do Kung Fu. And so now this has given me an open space to actually do that. Now I have time for it. So asking yourself, what do I truly want to spend my time on? And what am I currently spending my time on? And what do I need to let go of in order, right? What do I need to let go of in order to spend my time on the things that I truly want to? I studied genetics and I recently got in something about connection between mental and genetics. That's cool. I would love to, if you could share with me, why don't you email me? I'd love to hear what you're up to. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, genetics and mental, you know, I would really want to, I'd like to know genetically what's going on with me because I'm not like anything like my family when it comes to mental. <laughs> I tell you, I'm an alien. <laughs> I've come from another planet. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I totally have. Actually, uh, send me some information if you ever want to come on the show. You could talk about your stuff. I want to put people on the show. I think it's going to just add more value and quality. If I can get it to, to the audio at least to connect to the live stream on Facebook, that's what's kept me from having callers um, because I don't really – I'm not tech savvy. Good morning, AC4 mail. Um, I'm not that tech savvy, but I'm sure there's a way to figure it out. And – technology can pretty much do anything you want it to, I think. So um, if I can get the vo the voices to go live on Facebook, then I can have callers from Podbean go into the live Facebook as the, the voice and people can hear what's going on while they see my face live. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Um, and I am on Facebook Live if you choose to do that or see the videos as well. Um, it's at Spirit and Coffee uh, One, Spirit and Coffee One, at Spirit and Coffee One on Facebook. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I love you guys. Have the most magical, marvelous, magnificent Monday ever. You guys are badasses. Um, please know that, um, and know that you guys have so much to offer the world. And to me. Um, we all have our part to give and your part is just as important as anybody else's and don't ever forget that. So go out and be those spiritual alchemists, get your booties out there and live your best life, right? And if you're excited and you need to celebrate, let me know. I will celebrate with you. I love to celebrate people's wins. Okay. Love you guys. Have a fantastical day and I will see you tomorrow.